The court of Emperor Chandravarma of Chitragupta city was full of people. All the ministers were hailing Maharaj. Hail to the Supreme King Chandravarma. Hail to the Supreme King Chandravarma. Commander, let's start the work of the upper parliament soon. Yes sir. Your Majesty, Your Majesty. Majesty, greetings. Two women have come outside. They are fighting with each other. They also have a small child in their hand. Go, bring them inside. The soldier walks out and brings two women inside. This baby is mine. No, it's mine. It's mine. You want to steal my baby? No, you are lying. You liar. This baby is mine. Hey both of you, keep your mouth shut and tell me the truth right now. Whose child is this? It's mine, my lord. No sir, this child is mine. This woman is a liar. She stole my child from my house. I want my baby. You have stolen the baby. Then the king asked his smartest minister. Listen Chaturdas, can you tell whose child is this? I want to know. Yes your highness, I'll tell you right now. Chaturdas, why did you draw this line? Your majesty, you just keep on watching. Now the truth will come out soon and you will be amazed. Listen. You hold this child's hand and you hold its foot and whoever pulls this child towards themselves, this child would be hers. Both the women started pulling the mine. child vigorously no, towards mine. themselves. It's mine. No. The child started crying. Then one woman left the child and the other woman pulled the child towards herself. Huh? Her Highness, I, I am the real mother of this child. Yes, this child is yours. Am I right, Chaturdas? No, sir. This child is not hers. This child is of this crying woman. Hmm? How is it so, Chaturdas? Your Highness, the one who felt the pain of her child is the real mother, Your Highness. The king gives the child to her real mother and puts that deceitful woman in the prison. Once there was a man named John who used to live in a village named Belmont. He lived with his wife Mary and his daughter Alicia. John used to work on a farm nearby. After working in the afternoon, the workers at the farm used to sit at a nearby place to eat their lunch together. Oh John, what did you bring for lunch today? I brought parantas. What did you bring? I brought chapati and vegetables. Brother, the parantas from your house are very delicious. I always want to eat them. You can eat them if you like, brother Richard. I will eat your lunch. Richard and John finish their work and then go back to their homes. After coming back from work, John says to Mary, Hey Mary, your parantas are really delicious. Everyone loves them. Really? That night, there was a robbery at the farm owner's house. The next day, John and everyone else get together at the farm owner's house. Since all the money and jewelry was stolen, the farm owner did not have any money left. Because of this, he could not pay wages to all the workers. Brothers, because of the robbery, I cannot pay you your monthly wages. You can stop coming to my farms from now. Sir, please don't do this to us. John, if you work at my farms, then I would have to give you something. But I don't have anything left. Yes, sir, whatever is suitable to you. Now you can go. If I will need you, I will call you all. Yes, sir. All the farm workers go back to their homes. Some of them found work at other farms. But John could not find any work. Many days passed and John was still at home. What should be done so that we can pay for our household expenses? Hey, what happened? You have been thinking for the past 15 days and are not even eating properly. It's nothing. Just thinking about how to pay for our household expenses. I must find some money. Don't worry. We can do something. Stop thinking about it. The next day, Mary had an idea. She tells her husband. I have an idea. What if we sell the parathas that I make? Yes, your idea is very good. Let's start selling parathas from tomorrow itself. But Mary, it will require a lot of help and effort from you. You don't have to worry about that. I will take care of everything. The next day, John and Mary go to the market to sell the parantas and chutney they made. 
since there was already a paranta seller in the market they could not sell much of the parantas they gave all the remaining parantas to an orphanage and returned home nobody is buying our parantas what should we do now what will happen if you think like this today was the first day only and you are disappointed be patient those who try never give up the next day she prepares the parantas early and john and mary go to their shop to sell them again some of the parantas were made at home and the rest of them were made fresh there only the fragrance of her parantas attracted a lot of people and there was a crowd how many parantas would you like sir john give me 10 parantas with lots of butter yes sir i will add a lot of butter their parantas were now loved by a lot of people slowly their business started growing Now their shop was so crowded that their parantas started falling short. People were mad about their parantas. One day the richest man of their village, Winston, came to their shop and told John, "John, I have some work. Will you do it?" "Yes, I will do it. Tell, what is it?" "Tomorrow is my son's birthday. As you know, there is a feast every year for the whole village." I'm thinking if you could make parantas for this birthday party we will do it sir you don't have to worry about it can we do it mary yes we can do it that day john and mary went back to their homes and started thinking how can we make so many parantas i was thinking the same if we cannot complete the order our name and winson's reputation will be hurt we have to fulfill the promise we made yes but how can we make parantas for the whole village let's go to sleep and see to it in the morning then suddenly their house was filled with a lot of light both of them were scared to see the light who is this where is all the light coming from who is it show yourself a shape formed in that light and stood in front of them they were even more scared now then they heard a sound from the shape don't be scared john and mary i am god i am here to help you john and mary joined their hands and said Oh god we are lucky that we got to see you we are blessed that you came to our home john ask for what you want i am very happy with both of you god we have everything we wish for but we are worried about how we are going to fulfill tomorrow's order i am really happy to see both of your pure intentions take this magical parantha you will get whatever you ask from it mary and john thank the god and god disappears before giving the magical paranta in john's hands mary we will cook food from this paranta tomorrow yes we will do this only john and mary go to the birthday party tomorrow morning john tells the magical paranta oh magical paranta make 2000 parantas for me now suddenly 2000 parantas appear because of the magical paranta the fragrance was so good that everyone ate them happily winston's guests were very happy with the parantas john and mary were happy watching this watching his guests so happy winston was also pleased he tells the both of them john and mary both of you are wonderful Everyone here loved the food. Here is your money. Thank you sir. We are really happy that you trusted us with it. We will always be grateful to you. Thank you Mr. Vincent. John and Mary happily returned home and thanked the god. They started selling different types of parantas at their shop. They were very successful because of that magical paranta. They were known as paranta maker John and Mary throughout the village. There was a man named Bhola who lived in a village. He sold coconut water on the streets every day to make his ends meet. Take fresh coconut. Take fresh coconut water. It's good for your health. A few days later, he built a business just across from the railway station. People who came for morning or evening walk would buy a coconut from him. Bhola was naturally a pleasant guy. He was always eager to help others in need. He came across Ramu, who used to sell toys. Ramu seemed to be very hungry as well as tired. Hello Ramu, you look so exhausted and hungry. 
take this coconut water? Uh, but I'm short on cash. Ha <laughs> ha! When did I ask for money? Take it. When my toys are sold, I will return all your money. Saying this, Ramu begins drinking coconut water from that day on. Ramu visits Bola shop and begins drinking coconut water daily. Ramu came to Bola shop one day like this, and he saw. Hey, where did Bola uncle go today? Ramu quietly walks away from there. The next day, Ramu returns to Bola shop, but it was still closed. Hey, Bola uncle has not even come today. What would have happened? I should go and see. Ramu came searching for Bola uncle by asking people for his address. Ramu notices Bola uncle sleeping with a thin blanket. Uncle, what happened to you? You appear frail, and your business was closed for two or three days. So I came to see you. Son, my health is not that good. Are you alone in the house? Is there no one to take care of you? No one. Don't panic, Bola uncle. I will bring the doctor now. Ramu flees the house. He recalls something as soon as he steps outside the home. Ramu comes to a halt. There was a large coconut tree nearby. Hey, I don't have any money. What will I give to the doctor? Now how I am going to help Bola uncle? Ramu gets very disappointed thinking about this, and then suddenly. Don't worry, dear. I will help you out. Hey, magical tree. Will you please help me? Yes, sure. Why not? Say what do you want? Hey, magical tree. I don't want anything. Just heal my bhola uncle. He is very ill, and I don't have even money to give it to the doctor. I can fulfill any one of your wishes. Means? Either I can give you a lot of money. Or I can cure your bola, uncle. Tell me, what do you want? Just cure my bola, uncle, please. Well, take this coconut water and feed him. He will be fine. Ramu thanks the tree and goes back to Bhola's house. Bhola gets well after drinking the coconut water given by the magic tree. Hey, this coconut water is amazing. Where did you get it from? Ramu shows that coconut tree to Bhola from his window. Ramu, has its magic ended? Maybe. Long time ago, Lord Indra was talking to his angels while sitting in his Indralok. He was listening to their talks. Then Lord Indra saw two angels standing at the back. Lord Indra asked them, "What happened? Why are you so sad and worried?" "Hey Lord Indra, we have been searching for a person for some days who is good-natured and worries more about others than himself, and we will give that person a magical pot." so that he would help himself and others with that and do social service hmm okay then you will have to find that good natured person for yourself if you work really hard maybe you will find that person very soon yes lord indra we will go to earth and start looking for that good natured person from today now both the angels disguised in human form and started roaming on the earth both of them started analyzing the behavior of every person who crossed but both of them could not find any person who could be actual fit to have that magical pot both of them got tired tired and sat by a river side then they saw a young man joseph joseph was helping old people cross the river by making them sit on his horse both the angels got impressed by joseph and started thinking whether he was the right person for their magic pot or not but to be sure they wanted to test joseph this boy looks good natured to me but we cannot trust him so soon We should test him. Yes, sure. We should test him whether he is actually a good person or not. Let's see. Both the angel disguised as old women and sat on Joseph's feet. Joseph came there riding on his horse and saw that two old women were tired and were sitting there. He went near them and offered water to drink 
and asks them, "Hey, grandmother, what are you all doing in this dense forest? Do you have to go on a long journey? Can I help you? If you wish, I can take you to reach the nearby village on my horse." Hey, son, we have to travel many miles so that we can see our children for the last time. It had been many years we saw them, but we don't know how can we travel to the nearby village. We don't know whether we would be able to go there or not. There is slight possibility that God will not fulfill our last wish. Joseph started to think he had only one horse, and that was the only thing left of his grandfather, and that horse was the source of his. Learning. But he thought, if by giving my horse these two mothers meet their sons, their last wish might get fulfilled. So why not? I will give this horse to them. Joseph released his horse and said to the grandmothers, "Okay, grandmother, take my horse and go meet your sons. I have something to eat also. Take these also with you, so that you don't face any difficulty on the way." Joseph gave his horse and stuff to them. and walked away the angels started believing that joseph was the right person for their magic pot because he was good natured and kind both the angels came back to their original form and they told joseph about the magic pot by giving him the magic pot and his horse back joseph was surprised seeing all this the angels told him that he can ask for anything from this magic pot and can help others too joseph took that pot and went home happily he told everything to his mother and father with the help of the magic pot joseph and his family started living happily and comfortably along with his own help joseph started helping villagers with the help of that magical pot they gave them stuff to eat and drink with time joseph and his village prospered now joseph grew up but there was no change in his behavior he always helped people This news reached the king of nearby kingdom so he came to the village with his commanders I will go and see how is Joseph doing all this but your highness if you go like this Joseph will recognize you we should go there disguised like poor people then we will see what the matter is Both of them wore ordinary clothes and went there and they found out that this was all due to the magic pot If this pot comes in our kingdom All the problems of our people will be over. Our kingdom will prosper a lot. But how can we get this pot in our kingdom? Then the commander had an idea and he told the king, "Your Highness, why not marry our princess to Joseph? This will make both the places prosperous." Commander, you have given a great idea. I will talk to Joseph's parents today. King got back to his original form and talked to Joseph's parents. He explained everything to them. Joseph and his parents happily agreed to that, and Joseph got married to the king's daughter, princess with pomp and show. In this way, along with Joseph, the entire kingdom became prosperous.